Okay, so question one. A 32-year-old woman has presented to the emergency department at 30 weeks of gestation with sudden onset of painless, and that's important, painless vaginal bleeding. She reports that the bleeding started about an hour ago and has soaked through a sanitary pad. She has no pain or contractions and the baby is moving. Her pregnancy has been uneventful until this episode. She has no significant past medical history. On examination, heart rate 90, BP 110 over 70, O2 saturation 98%. Abdomen soft, non-tender and a fetal heart, a height, fundal height, compatible with her dates. So she's 30. She's been candidated, blood sent for cross match, and the on call obstetric team have been asked to see her. What's the most useful next step in her management? So, here are the options give anti D immunoglobulin, administer corticosteroids for fetal lung maturity, maturation, arrange theatre for delivery by caesarean section, arrange ultrasound. Or finally, five, perform a digital vaginal examination to assess cervical dilatation. Okay, right, so what, what are we getting at here? What type of problem have we got in this question? Okay, so it's an antepartum hemorrhage. Okay, so bleeding at this bleeding between 20 weeks and labor is called an APH, antepartum hemorrhage. And painless bleeding, the most likely cause of painless bleeding is placenta previa. So I'm going to be looking at that in a moment. So if you look at the vital signs here, she's not she's not particularly tachycardic, blood pressure is okay, soft non-tender abdomen. And that makes placental abruption unlikely. She's been cannulated, and of course, she needs to be cross matched. And the problem with placenta previa is you can get massive bleeding, massive bleeding can occur very quickly. And so, um, what, do, what do we need with her? Well, the, she's going to need to have um, a diagnosis, first of all. So, the first thing that she needs is an ultrasound. So the answer I'm looking for here is a range ultrasound. Um, she, she's almost certainly going to need a caesarean section, but you need to know what you're dealing with here. If I just run through this, we're going to do anti-D a little bit later, coming to that, but um, there will be a place for anti-D probably, because there may well be fetomaternal transfusion occurring as part of this. Steroids for fetal lung maturation, there's just not time for that. There isn't, 28 to 32 weeks, there is a benefit from giving dexamethasone to uh, promote fetal lung maturation. Digital vaginal examination, the place for that is for cervical incompetence, looking for a weakness of the cervix. It's probably a bit late by 30 weeks for that. That would be more an issue with bleeding, perhaps around 16 weeks or something like that. So, antepartum hemorrhage, if we just go through this, placental causes, placenta previa. Now, the placenta, when the fertilized ovum implants within the uterus, yeah, it may implant in different places. If it implants low in the uterus, it still tends to move upwards during pregnancy because of uh, the formation of the lower segment which tends to extend the lower segment, it's a minority, quite a small minority of the pregnancies that end up around the lower segment, around the os. But if they do, as the lower segment forms around 32 weeks, this stretching of the endometrium of the uterus can separate the placental edge and cause really massive hemorrhage. There's often a small bleed first and then a massive bleed later, so it's a very serious problem. Placental abruption is a painful condition. So this is where the placenta separates off from the uterine wall and you get a bleeding between the placenta and the uterine wall. Now that bleeding can be what's known as revealed, 
So if it's near the edge of the placenta or if the placenta is near the os, the blood might come down and out of the uterus. But if it's more fundal, if it's higher up, and the edges of the placenta remain attached to the uterus, there can be a big hematoma between the uh, uterus and the placenta. Vasa previa are blood vessels, um, not the placenta itself, but small blood vessels crossing over the os. Those are placental causes, and those are most of them, to be honest. Uh, well, certainly most of the significant ones. Maternal causes, well, it can be a uterine rupture. <clears throat> it can be just a, a, a cervical ectropion, which is where you've just got some, it's a, essentially it's an endocrine problem where you've got endometrial, uh, instead of the squamous epithelium of the cervix, you've got some of the glandular epithelium outside, which can then bleed. Similarly, polyps can bleed, and genital tract trauma, of course. Infections, severe infection of the cervix or uterus is another cause. So it's these top two is the ones we're mostly interested in and concerned about. This is placenta previa, just this is an ultrasound of some, a woman with a placenta that's over the internal os. So the pink is the uterus. Here's the os here, the external os and the vagina, the internal os here shown. And here's the placenta right across the os. This, it's impossible for this patient to deliver safely. As the lower segment stretches, this is going to move against the endometrial wall, the uterine wall, and you will get bleeding. That This will cause bleeding sooner or later. So you can't deliver through a placenta previa like that. This is a placental abruption now. And the placenta, here's the uterus, here's the placenta. You can see it's separated and there's bleeding between them. This can occur in trauma, and it's one of the serious consequences of maternal trauma. So, for example, a woman, you know, with a seatbelt on, head-on collision, sudden impact on the uterus can cause the placenta to separate from the uterine wall and cause this sort of bleeding. And this immediately jeopardizes the pregnancy um, because you've got immediately, you, you can't, can't get any oxygenation of the placenta. A pretty serious complication, abruption, and high risk to the uh, pregnancy. <clears throat>